Well, good morning. Welcome to Bible Baptist Church. If you're able, let's take your hymnal. Hymn number 224. 224. We're going to sing Holy, Holy, Holy. And then we're going to sing Draw Me Nearer. Holy, Holy, Holy. 224. Holy, Holy, Holy. shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. We'll sing that second. Holy, 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 saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which word and art and evermore shall be on that last holy 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 lord god almighty all thy work shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea Blessed Trinity. 223 is Draw Me Nearer. I am thine, O Lord. Hymn number 223, Draw Me Nearer. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with the steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. On that last, there are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. All right, we're going to give you some prayer requests this morning, and then we're going to have a word of prayer. And... Um, Certainly want to be mindful to pray for those who have COVID in our church family. We've had several that tested positive this past week, and because of that, we've gone back to our online services, and so certainly be mindful to pray for those, and if you have any questions about who it might be, uh, as far as being in contact with them, you can get a hold of us, and we'll certainly be glad to tell you that, and, and we love you, and we're going to have a special prayer for those uh, that are sick right now, that God will be with them and bless them. Um, my father-in-law, Miss Deanna, is in Texas um, at her mom and dad's uh, helping take care of her dad. He's down to 115 pounds now, and they had to come and take him by ambulance to the uh, hospital 
uh, yesterday, and, and um, so just pray for him, and, and uh, he's supposed to have a pain pump, which is under his skin, changed out tomorrow at a different hospital, so they're trying to get him hydrated and, and uh, checking his heart out and so forth, and, uh, and also Brenda Corley, we always pray for Johnny Corley and his dialysis, but his wife Brenda had back surgery uh, here recently, and she needs our prayers this morning, and this past week she had back surgery, so please pray for her, and also pray for Brother Henry and his, uh, his knees and so forth, that God would be with with him and then some of y'all uh, way back would remember Phil and Yolanda Chambers that came to our church and, and they had a lot of children and and um, anyway uh, their son Luke passed away this week and Luke back when he was a boy played basketball uh, at our Christian school and all of that so please pray for the Chamber family that God would comfort them and his funeral will be I think tomorrow in, in Hot Springs and then Miss Donna Allen Miss um, Donna Allen's mom is under hospice care and so uh, she's in Chicago with her mother. All her brothers and sisters are coming in there to see uh, her mom. And so please pray for that situation. And then pray for those that are without power. And uh, a lot of our people have been without power because of the storm this week. And some still don't have power. And, and uh, some have said maybe as, as long as Tuesday before they get theirs back on. So some have gotten it back on, but many still don't have it back on. And, and uh, so anyway, pray for the Fosters there. Uh, they're in Ruston, Louisiana. They had a lot of trees down there. They've been without electricity as well so pray for them they just recently celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary by the way and uh, so that was a blessing and and uh, so thank the lord for that and um and then i have some others here uh, that we've been praying for uh uh Cason porter and ann shelton and then brother billy kirsch had his uh, back surgery this week and he's home recovering so pray for him and miss colette as she takes care of him and and uh, everything went well with that and uh, Brother Bob with his back, Brother Bob Weedo, and then Ashley Walker, and Miss Mary Pepper, and Frida Lassiter, and pray for all of our schools, and just the safety, and all with students, and everything, and then uh, my grandson Dylan back in Bible college, he had his wisdom teeth cut out right before he went, but he's doing well, and also Brennan Gaffney had all four of his wisdom teeth cut out as well. Teddy Dallas is Brother Chris Dallas's dad, he has a small tumor on one of his kidneys, going to have surgery on September 28th, and just pray that it would be benign and not cancerous, and that would be a real blessing. And uh, Jim Mason's uncle passed away. I'm going to ask you to pray for his family as well. And then um, pray for all of uh, my preacher friends. I've got a bunch of preacher friends in California and also in New Jersey. Uh, we've preached in both those places uh, a lot of times over a bunch of years and have a lot of friends there. And, you know, they're unable to, to get together and have church and worship uh, because of the government. You know, they're kind of overstepping their bounds, no doubt. And... Uh, Anyway, just pray for those churches out there as they're kind of going through the fire, and, and some of them are having services, and they're getting fined every service. It's really sad, and, and uh, you know, they're telling them they can't sing. They're just telling I me mean, there's so many things they can't do in church, and it's just the government doesn't have the authority to do that, okay? And so just pray for those governors that God would change their hearts and overturn the, the decisions that have been made, and pray for grace for those pastors. Um, I know Pastor Treber there in Santa Clara uh, he's been there 45 years, and, and uh, man, my heart goes out to him, and they have a large ministry there, and, and uh, they're just, you know, really having a hard time right now, just, just you know, and they're continuing on with their services, and I, you know, just pray for them, though, that God will just give them grace, and, and they're, they're kind, and they love the Lord, and they're good people, and they've been there serving that community for 45 years, and, and running buses, and all of that stuff, and man, they can't do any of that, but, you know, that's fine, but, you know, to say that they can't meet at their church, you know, with all the social distancing and everything they're doing, uh, and not be able to sing and all of that. They're finding them $5,000 a service. So just pray for those situations around the country like that, that God would be with those uh, those churches and so forth and their people. This morning we want to pray for those that are sick in our church family. If you're sick this morning, we love you. And I'm so sorry that you are sick. And, and um, we want to have special prayer for you this morning and ask God to be with you and to bless you. Okay, Brother Dalton Smith, will you come? And Brother Dalton, one of our young men, he's going to have special prayer this morning for those of you that are sick. And, and you, you hang in there, okay? It'll get better. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for um, allowing us to still have church online, and Lord, uh, to worship you and uh, praise you. We may, we, may, we may not be here in church, Lord, but we can still praise you wherever we're at, and we can still learn about you, God, and to, to love you more. And um, I thank you for Pastor uh, Pastor Weedo, just uh, giving, him, giving him the wisdom what to do. What I know probably it wasn't an easy decision, um, but God, you know, what we're doing right now is what God... Uh, you told him to do, and uh, for our church, and in the best interest of our people's health, and just to, um, to continue going forward. And Lord, I pray, we do pray for the ones on the prayer list, um, Lord, the ones that have lost loved ones, the, lo the ones that, um, we just pray that you give them comfort, the ones that have had surgery surgeries recently, Lord, there's uh, so many that have 
you know, just health health issues, Lord, and that we know that you're in control of, Lord, that you're taking care of them. And God, I pray that you'll you'll just give them the strength to to, to uh, just to rehab and Lord to get back uh, just to better better than they were before. And I pray that you'll be with the ones that um, Lord just got sick and uh, the ones that, that just haven't been feeling well and they got the, the virus, Lord. We pray, we pray for those. We pray that you'll give them a speedy recovery and Lord that we can. Um, get back to having church again soon and just having it uh, the way, you know, with the way the Bible says to have it, God. And I pray that we can do that. And I pray that you'll just give them comfort and help them, um, Lord, and, and help us as, uh, you know, the just church members here, Lord, to realize that um, that you're in control of everything, God. And everything that happens is, is did, did not catch you by surprise. And, Lord, uh, but help us in this time to realize, also to realize that we need to keep our walk strong with you. We need to keep our testimony uh, Lord, we need to keep walking with you each and every day because, you know, whenever, sometimes when we're not in church and when we're not around the Word of God as much as we we are in uh, just normal situations, Lord, that it's easy for us to get away from you. I pray that you'll be with all of our church members, including me, God, especially me. Just help us to continue to stay close to you um, through these trying times. Continue to give Brother J.D. wisdom. Lord, be with, uh, like I said, be with uh, the several, the, all the ones on the prayer list, Lord. There's so many different needs um, that we ask that you just intervene on their behalf. And God, be with us today. Help us to just to learn about you and to love you more today. Love you, Christ, and I pray. Amen. All right. Um, I want to read to you a missionary uh, prayer letter. And, um, you know, I was talking to Miss Nada this week, and and uh, she began to weep on the telephone just, just talking about the goodness of God to our missions program. And, you know, all through this time, you know, we didn't know how everything was going to go uh, with, with our missions program. But, I just want to say thank you to all of you who've been mindful to continue to give your, your faith promise missions offering on our on our missions uh, on our envelopes. We have a, the tithes and offerings and a building fund, and we have a place there for missions. And of course, we normally have a missions conference every year, and we weren't able to have that this year in April. But uh, everybody just kind of continued on with their missions giving, and maybe some have increased, maybe some that weren't giving have started giving. I don't know. But if you walk in our auditorium, you see all the missionary boards around the wall, and even out in the hallway now in the foyer, and uh, we love missions, and it's just, I think, our giving being sustained and continued and, and even increasing during this time is a reflection of our heart for the Lord, because the Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, and so we just thank you on behalf of our missionaries. Many of you remember Josh and Joy Wesson. Josh, uh, Brother Josh Wesson went home to be with the Lord. He drowned in the Caribbean Sea and, and uh, trying to rescue some, some boys there, and and I've got a pair of his shoes in my office, but I always enjoy reading Miss Joy's um, uh, prayer letter. And uh, I want to read that to you this morning. It says, Dear Praying Friends, we thank the Lord for his continued blessing and pro uh, provision for our family. Our hearts are filled with gratitude and appreciation to our churches, friends, and family members who continue to support us faithfully in spite of economic difficulties that, that many are experiencing because of the pandemic. Thank you for uh, the special offerings. Uh, you have sent and for reaching out to us through phone calls email, and emails during this time. It has warmed my heart to have Kimberly here for a short time between semesters. It is wonderful to have her back on the team for a little while. She has brought joy and enthusiasm to us in the deaf ministry. I wonder how I ever get along without her. With the government keeping us under curfew, we've had to make some adjustments to service times to stay within the limits uh, they have set, in spite of the changes, it has been wonderful to have the deaf coming b uh, back again after weeks and months of not being able or not being allowed uh, to have services. The deaf who have made decisions for Christ have a desire to learn and grow, but are so limited in their ability to read the Bible for themselves and really have no idea how to simply pray and talk to the Lord. We are working on teaching them how to pray by taking prayer requests and then splitting up into small groups. Uh, prayer groups with our deaf workers to teach them how to pray on their own. Reading the Bible is even more challenging for them. I am setting aside time to teach them how to read and understand the scriptures. What a blessing to see them read and sign the scriptures back to me as I teach them each week. In addition to seeing the deaf grow in their understanding of the Bible and prayer, it is encouraging to see the deaf workers pr progress in their teaching skills as well as their enthusiasm. Two of our workers, Edwin and Ronald, have taught the lesson these past two Sundays and have done a wonderful job. In my personal devotions, the Lord has spoken to my heart through my scripture memorization in Philippians, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain, Philippians 2.16. 
The Lord has used this verse to encourage me to seek out someone that I could witness to even though we are having to social distance. On a recent trip outside the capital, I had the opportunity to witness to the cleaning lady at the house where we were staying. Her name is Albania. She related to me how she grew up in a non-Christian home and was trying to find the truth. I had just taught uh, our, our deaf, the precious, uh, previous Sunday on John 10, 9, where Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. I explained to her that Jesus is the only way to heaven. What a blessing it was to lead her to accept Christ as her Savior. Another precious soul that was recently saved is a young lady named Elizabeth. Stephen had a burden to see her accept Christ and was praying for her salvation. It blessed my heart uh, to hear that uh, he and Kimberly led her to Christ following the morning service a couple of weeks ago. It is because of your faithfulness to support us financially and prayerfully that we can serve the Lord here. We are so blessed. May the Lord bless each of you as well as you serve him where he has placed you to reach souls for his glory. Miss Joy, Kimberly, Stephen, Ashlyn, and Caitlin Wesson. And the Wessons are our missionaries serving in the Dominican Republic. In the Dominican Republic. So isn't that a blessing that even in the midst of all this, we have a deaf lady, uh, deaf people being saved in the Dominican Republic through one of our missionaries. And, you know, you think about it, without a missionary, what would the odds of a deaf person uh, even have the opportunity to hear the gospel preached and to be saved? And so we're so thankful for our faithful missionaries. But, again, I want to just say thank you to you for your faithfulness in giving. Now, remember, uh, these next couple of Sundays, you know, we have the online giving. And uh, then also, we, you know, if you can mail, mail it in, if you just mail a check in, we'll put it in an offering envelope so we'll have a record of it and all of that. And, and again, I appreciate all of you who've been mindful of that and, and to give during this time. We also had a, an air conditioner. It's the last air conditioner to go out uh, in our school building next door, our Sunday school building and school building. And that, that air conditioner was 30-something years old. And uh, anyway, what a blessing that it lasted that long, amen. But uh, again, that's an additional expense that we have. Uh, this week, if anybody could could, could uh, give extra toward the air conditioning, that would be a real blessing at this time. And and uh, again, thank you for your faithfulness in tithing. And the tithe is the Lord's. And then I know that uh, as God blesses you, many of you give offerings, uh, not missions offerings and building fund offerings and all of that. But we do have a need with the air conditioning uh, going out. I don't want to say thank you here. I got a little note, and uh, this comes from David and and uh, David and Kathy Smith, and they're in Gerald, Texas, and. It says, Brother Weedo, thank you for always being, being there for us. We uh, struggle during this, uh, these hard times, but it is great that we can still keep the faith every Sunday by watching uh, church services on Facebook. Thank you, Kathy and David. And they sent a check uh, in the mail, and I appreciate David and Kathy uh, way down in Texas tuning in on Facebook. Amen. It's a blessing, and they attended our church here for, for years and years. And that's Miss Peggy's son, David, and Kathy's, you know, daughter. Anyway, we love them, and they love us, and they were here not long ago for Miss Peggy's birthday, and that's a great blessing, okay? All right, well, we're glad you're tuning in this morning, and we're glad to be here, and, and uh, appreciate your prayers on our behalf. Um, Miss uh, Mandy Hobson yesterday, they brought the Hobsons brought me some rabbit stew. Amen. So, man, I'm feeling mighty fine this morning, and uh, that rabbit stew changed my life. Amen. They raised rabbits, and uh, anyway, that stew was amazing. And I was talking to Brother Clifton Barker, and he was telling me about eating rabbit dumplings, and he said rabbit dumplings are good. I've never had rabbit dumplings, and I'd never had rabbit stew until yesterday. But anyway, uh, it was good. Amen. So I'm in on this rabbit stew, and uh, but we're, we're thanking the Lord that we have the measure of health to be here this morning and to preach the Word of God. So let's sing another song at this time, then we'll have our special, and that'll be a blessing. My Jesus, I love thee, 215. My Jesus, I love thee. <clears throat> My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin, I resign. My grace. is now I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, 
just is now in mansions of glory and endless delight i'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright i'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow if ever i love thee my jesus tis now Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. serve him the sweeter he grows the more that i love him more love he bestows each day is like heaven my heart overflows the longer i serve him the sweeter he Plenteous grace he bestows. Every day my way gets brighter. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. All right. Thank you, Brother Lee. I appreciate that. And, um... Well, Lee, I'm just going to work off of the, um, the pulpit mic this morning, if that's all right. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter number 4, Acts chapter number 4. And um, a while back, I, I, uh, Miss Deanna was talking to me about, you know, preaching some of the old messages that I'd preached back in the day. And uh, I was looking through some notes and found a, a sermon that I'd preached a long time ago. And it kind of begins in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 13. And so I've been thought I'd just drop back a little bit so we've been preaching out of Acts chapter 3 and and then today Acts chapter 4 just trying to lay a little foundation and we'll get where we're going uh, probably beginning next week and we'll explain a little bit more about that but um, let me uh, Acts chapter 4 if you have your Bible there let me just have a special word of prayer before we get started again as well for those that are sick and I want to mention Miss Diane Wilson Miss Diane uh, battling cancer and also Miss Allie uh, Weedo and others that are you know going through treatments right now and just pray for all those on our our cancer list as well and also pray for the Bill Griffin that God will be with him and and Miss Ellen uh, during this time as well let's bow our heads and we'll pray father we love you today we sure do and God we thank you you said my house shall be called the house of prayer Lord you said call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not Lord, right now, I pray you'd come alongside, Lord, our people are hurting, Lord, we got some people that are sick, Lord, and I pray you touch their bodies, and Lord, those that are battling cancer, and those that are battling COVID, Lord, I pray you just give great grace during these days, Lord, and God, we need you, we need you, we sure do, we love you, Lord, and God, the last thing on earth we want to do is make people sick here at Bible Baptist Church, dear Lord, and God, that's never been our intent, Lord, and we just felt like it was necessary, Lord, to pull back in a little bit here for a couple of weeks, and let everything kind of settle down, then we'll make another run at it, dear Lord, with your, your grace and help and healing, Lord. We just trust you to see us through, Lord, and God, we love you, 
Thank you for all those preacher friends of mine, Lord, who have already kind of been down this road, Lord, in their churches. And, Lord, they're doing better. And I thank you for that. Lord, it gives us hope and, and all. And I just pray you bless uh, each home, each heart that's listening this morning in a special way. And we'll thank you for all you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Acts chapter 4, the persecution of believers begins uh, here in this chapter. And Peter and John were the first disciples to experience um, persecution, you know. And you'd think that the healing of the, of the blind man, or, or the lame man, rather, in Acts chapter number 3. Man, I can just see this, uh, you know, I can see this man laying at the, at the gate, beautiful there, and begging alms and asking alms of Peter and John. And, and I can just hear Peter saying, man, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have to give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And man, I can see this, this lame man, you know, the, the strength begins to come into his ankle bones and he stands up and man, I can see him walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. And man, the crowd begins to gather. And man, Peter just lets the hammer down and tells him how it wasn't because of Peter being a faith healer or anything like that. It was because of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he gives the glory to God. And man, what a blessing. What a blessing to kind of, you know, just be a fly on the wall. What a blessing to have a, have a Bible, amen, that shares these stories with us. And we can just kind of rejoice in, in, in how powerful our God is, okay? And uh, his hand is not short, his ear is not heavy, he's just as powerful as he's ever been. And uh, he can help us today, and I thank God that he can. The, the title of my message today, and again, you would have th you know, you would think that the healing of this lame man would have given honor and praise to Peter and John, but persecution was the, the, the result. And so the title of my mes message today, Brother Lee, is Persecution. Persecution. I thought if I was kind of flipping through uh, Facebook Live or YouTube and I, I saw a title that you know, said persecution, I thought, man, that'd be something maybe I'd kind of click on. So if you're listening this morning, wow, uh, persecution is the title of the message. Let me give you, first of all, uh, the arrest of the disciples, okay? The early church actually uh, had experienced favor with the people. The Bible says in Acts 2.47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And, and so, wow, wow, you know, they had favor with the people. Now, look in Acts chapter 4, verse number 1. The Bible says, And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Wow, such a crowd had gathered around. And again, it was in the colonnade out, you know, kind of on the side of the temple there. And this large crowd had gathered to see what was going on. And and, and again, Peter and John, uh, they gathered around Peter and John because of the healing of the lame man, okay? And so you got the priest and the captain of the temple, the Sadducees, they kind of came upon them. And it didn't take long before the Sanhedrin, the religious crowd, began attacking the church and those who preach Christ. And uh, Brother Lee, we, we, our choir used to sing this song, We Preach Christ, and it's got a whole bunch of pages to it, like seven pages. But man, I love that song, We Preach Christ. Risen from the grave, we preach Christ, the only one who has the, the strength to save. And again, what a blessing. I mean, on and on it goes. But we preach Christ here at Bible Baptist Church, amen. And we sing Christ here at Bible Baptist Church. And so, anyway, this is what stirred up the religious leaders of that day. Look at verse number 2. The Bible says, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Now, traditionally, uh, the priest and the high priest, uh, they came from the ranks of the uh, aristocratic Sadducees, okay? And, and the Sadducees were violently opposed to the fact that Peter and John taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead because they didn't believe, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, okay? So the arrest was made under the guise of stopping uh, the disturbance down at the temple, you know, and and, but the real reason was the fact that the religious leaders were very upset, they were grieved, they were very indignant over the fact that pr the preaching of Christ and his resurrection uh, was the main issue that, that was at hand. Now look at verse number 3. The Bible says, And they laid hands on them, on Peter and John, they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. So the end result of Peter and John, they were boldly uh, thrown into prison and incarcerated. They were locked up in jail until the next day, until the next day. And by the way, their arrest was not gentle. The Bible says they laid hands on them. I mean, it was rough and, and mean. And, you know, today it just it still seems it's, it's true today that, 
that those who preach Christ and the gospel are, are often the first ones to experience the loss of freedom uh, in society. And again, uh, I'm, I'm, my heart is so burdened for my preacher friends in, in California. And, you know, I preach out there, and I wrote down Brother Carlos Serrano in National City, Brother Jim Christensen in Fallbrook, California, Brother Jason Brown in El Cajon, and Chris Chadwick, Pastor Chris Chadwick in San Diego, Pastor Doug Fisher in San Diego, Pastor Jack Treber in Santa Clara, Pastor Paul Chapel, Lancaster. These are all places that I've been and preached with all these men of God, and I've been to all these places out in California, and then in Berlin, New Jersey, Pastor Charlie Clark and and Solid Rock Baptist Church there, and Andy Reese and Bible Baptist Church in Clemington, New Jersey. And these, these men of God are being persecuted, okay? They're being persecuted for preaching Jesus Christ, okay? For having church, they're, they're being fined. And my heart goes out to them. And, and, you know, they got lawsuits on top of lawsuits. And, and man, we just need to pray for them. Amen, we need to pray for them. Just like, I mean, just like in Bible days, uh, things are happening even in the day that we live. Now, I want you to notice in verse number 4, and I want you to underline, if you mark in your Bible, the little word, how be it. How be it. I'm going to give you a how be it this morning, and I'm going to give you a how be it tonight in the story of Samson. And we'll be preaching on Samson tonight. But look in verse number 4, it says, How be it, many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. This is the, 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 the second sermon that Peter had preached, and 5,000, the end result was 5,000 men. Uh, you know, got saved and they believed. And, and again, what a great victory uh, for the faith and for the Lord Jesus Christ. But persecution will not stop the Word of God. Amen. And thank God for our missionaries and thank God that we can still pass out tracts and we can do what we can do. And again, the Word of God is not going to return void. God is still in control. And uh, we think evil has taken over until we witness a divine how be it, okay? How be it? I like that. How be it right there. Many of them which heard the word believed, and even though Peter and John are in jail, amen, how be it? Thank the Lord 5,000 men, uh, you know, were saved by the grace of God, amen? They believed the word of God, okay? I took the song written by Oswald J. Smith. The title of the song is Then Jesus Came, and I thought about it like this way. One sat alone beside the highway begging. His eyes were blind. The light he could not see, he clutched his rags and shivered in the shadows. How be it? How be it? Then Jesus came and bade his darkness flee. From home and friends, the evil spirits drove him. Among the tombs, he dwelt in misery. He cut himself as demon powers possessed him. How be it? How be it? Then Jesus came. Then Jesus came and set the captive free. Unclean, unclean, the leper cried in torment. The deaf, the dumb, in helplessness stood near. The fever raged, disease had gripped its victim. How be it? Then Jesus came and cast out every fear. So men today have found the Savior able. They could not conquer passion, lust, and sin. Their broken hearts had left them sad and lonely. How be it, how be it, then Jesus came and dwelt himself within. How be it, when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the life with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Man, what a blessing. Thank God. How be it. Verse 4, many of them heard the word. Many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Wow. The arrest of the disciples. Number two, the asking of the disciples. After incarcerating, locking Peter and John up in jail overnight, the next morning the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, uh, the religious leaders, they met to question uh, Peter and John to discuss the problem. And I want you to look at verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, Acts chapter 4 and verse 5 and verse number 6. And it came to pass on the morrow that the, their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. So the religious leaders were the ones behind the incarceration, behind the trial, and, 
and, and they're not at all concerned, listen to me now, they're not at all concerned that the lame man was healed or that a sermon was preached. But look at verse number 7. Uh, it says, and, and when they had set them, verse 7 now, Acts 4, 7, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? And they didn't care about that lame man from his mother's womb being healed and even the fact that Peter was preaching. They wanted to know whose name. They, 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 they wanted to, they, and they knew it. They knew, look back in verse number 2, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They already knew, uh, you know, what was going on, you know, that Jesus was involved in it, but they wanted these men to confess it, okay? So they kind of play dumb by asking the question because they want a confession, if you, if you would, okay? But we have the arrest of the disciples, and then we have the asking, the, the interrogation of the disciples, the asking questions and so forth. Number three, we have the answering by the disciples. Now, this is getting really good right here. Man, oh, Peter, I love Peter. I can't wait to meet Peter when we get to heaven. Peter's always bold. Man, he's ready to preach, man. Let the hammer down. Look at verse number eight. This is awesome. Then Peter, now notice this next little statement right here, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I like that. Filled with the Holy Ghost. That does make a difference, by the way. Uh, you know, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and, and what a blessing. Filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. So Peter, man, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. He's got the power of God on his life, and he's answering his critics, and, and he begins his third sermon here in verse number 9. Here's his third sermon. If we this day be examined of the good deed done by the impotent man, this, this lame man, the good deed, amen, it was a good deed, amen, that that man was healed, that could walk and leap and praise God for what God had done. That was a good deed, amen. And by the way, when you get saved by the grace of God, that's a good thing, amen, it's a good deed. And, and this good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole. Wow. Man, he just kind of, Peter's just like, he's filled with the Holy Ghost and and, and he's just kind of letting the hammer down. He boldly says that this man was healed in the power and by the authority of and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Look at verse number 10, man. This is awesome. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him... By him, by Jesus, doth this man stand here, this lame man, stand here before you whole. Wow. Here we go again, man. Peter boldly, I mean boldly, preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter just made certain, without any doubt, to the council that the council knew that Jesus was the one who was doing the healing. Wow. Peter links it to a well-known Old Testament passage uh, in Psalms 118.22 that says the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. Look at verse number 11. It says this is the stone, Acts 4.11, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which has become the head of the corner. Wow. The cornerstone then was the most important stone in the building and Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of Israel yet Israel, the, the, the religious leaders rejected Jesus Christ. They mean they rejected him and Peter just makes it clear that the, the once uh, despised Jesus of Nazareth is now glorified. He's at the right hand of the throne of the Father and one by one, uh, the, the one who, by whose authority this man was healed was Jesus. They mean it was by Jesus' power and Jesus' authority and if the Sanhedrin insist, insist on denying Denying the name and the power of Jesus, they're also resisting salvation. Wow. Peter makes it clear that Jesus is the source of the healing of the lame man. And he's also the redeemer of mankind. Now, Acts chapter 4, verse number 12. This is a very, very important verse in your Bible. I hope that you'll kind of mark this verse and look at it. And, and uh, man, I love this verse. And, of course, you know, kind of getting it in the context of the story of the healing of the of the lame man and Peter, Peter just letting you know it, the hammer down, so to speak, and preaching the death, burial, and resurrection to these religious leaders that had put him in jail overnight. And look what he says in verse number 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's no other salvation, there's no other name, there's no other time under heaven, 
No one is excluded, given among men. There's no exceptions. You've got to be saved if you're going to go to heaven, okay? Healing is not going to take you to heaven. Tongues is not going to take you to heaven. The church is not going to take you to heaven. Buddha is not going to take you to heaven. Confucius is not going to take you to heaven. Mohammed's not going to take you to heaven. None of these false uh, religions and cults in the world, none of those things are going to take you to heaven, okay? And the only way you're saved is through Jesus Christ alone, and he's the one by whom salvation comes to us. And, man, I'm glad I'm saved saved today. Let me give you three vital things this morning in closing. Three vital things about salvation. Notice first of all in verse number 12, the way of salvation. Number one, the way of salvation. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other. Okay, so the text here, the Bible makes it plain that Jesus is the only way of salvation. It is only Jesus and Jesus Christ only who, who saves us, okay? Jesus said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's not multiple choice. All roads do not lead to heaven. No, Jesus is the only way to heaven. His shed blood is the only thing that can atone for our sins. So the way of salvation, neither is there salvation in any other, any other. Now, number two, number two, the grace of salvation. It says, for there is none other name under heaven given, given. You know what? I'm glad, I'm glad the grace of salvation given. Notice that word given there. Grace is not, it's not something that we work toward. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, so we're not working our way to heaven no, we're going there because salvation is given. Uh, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave, God gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that's anybody, should not perish but, but have everlasting life. Man, what a blessing. I mean, what a blessing. Jesus was God's gift to mankind. God's gift to mankind. Why? For salvation so that we could be saved. So we wouldn't have to die and go to hell, pay for our sins ourselves. Salvation is all of grace. It's all of grace. All of grace and not of works. Number three, the last thing. So we have the way of salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other. We have the grace of salvation. It's given, amen. Another name under heaven, given, given, given. Then the last thing this morning is this, the necessity of salvation. It says Hebrew, uh, uh, in, in Acts 4.12, the last part says, whereby we must be saved. Whereby we must be saved, okay. Unless you're saved, there will be no heaven for you. You're not going to heaven. If you don't get saved. If you leave the gift of God, which is eternal life, if you leave that on the table, you're going to die in your sins. And, and just by not doing anything, the Bible says, he that believeth not is condemned already. So I'm telling you, you have to receive Christ. You have to believe on him. And the exalting of Jesus for salvation, this provoked his critics and his enemies. Uh, but why? Because they hated Jesus Christ. And there's still that crowd out here today. They don't understand. And, and uh, Brother Chris Dallas was here recently in a revival. And he said, why do the heathen rage? The heathen rage because they're heathen. That's why they rage and, and they hate Jesus Christ. And they're the enemies of the Bible, the enemy, critics of Jesus Christ, and the enemies of Jesus Christ. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're listening this morning and you're lost, you need to be saved today because neither is there salvation in any other. But there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You've got to receive Christ. You've, whereby we must be saved. The necessity of salvation. You've got to be saved. And I'm telling you this morning, if you're lost, that today is the day of salvation. The Bible says in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says in Romans 5.12, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We've all sinned, amen, and we're all in the same boat. And the Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, so our sins has to be paid for, and you can die and go to hell, pay for it yourself or you can accept what Jesus Christ did for you on the old rugged cross. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not through going to church, not through any of these other things, but through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5, 8 says, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for you. He died for me. He died for the sins of the whole world. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent, repentance. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God, that God hath raised him from the dead, 
Wow, here it is again. That's Peter's message. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That God hath raised Jesus from the dead, raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Then the Bible says in Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm so thankful for that deaf lady in the Dominican Republic that Joy Wesson had the privilege of leading to Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for that deaf lady in the Dominican Republic that her children had the privilege of leading to Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you this morning, listen, if you're saved by the grace of God, hey, listen, you're, the picture you are in the story is, hey, we're the lame man, amen. We're the, 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 the man that's laid by the beautiful gate. And, hey, if anybody ought to be walking and leaping and praising God, it ought to be God's children for all that God's done for us. Hey, I'm not going to hell no more. I don't know a lot of things about a lot of things, but I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And listen, God, listen, he, he, he talked more, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, wanna, I, I want you to go to heaven with me. I do. In hell this morning there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Oh, Dr. J. Frank Norris, a great old time preacher, said this. He said, I'd do anything. I'd do anything to keep a man out of hell. I'd do anything to keep a man out of hell. If you're listening this morning and you've never been saved by the grace of God, listen, neither is, is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must be saved. Today is the day of salvation. And if you are saved, man, you ought to be walking and leaping and praising God that you are not on your way to a place called hell no more. Amen. That you're on your way to a place called heaven because of the Jesus Christ and what he did for you. On that old rugged cross. Miss Crystal, you can come and play something softly for us this morning. You know, you have to appropriate your own salvation. The Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You say, preacher, man, I, I don't know what to do. Hey, I'm telling you this morning, you can bow your knee and you can bow your heart. It don't matter where you are or who you are or who your mama is. Listen, hey, if you realize you're lost this morning without God and without hope and you realize, man, if I die like I am, I'm going to split hell wide open. Hey, you can be saved today. You can bow your head. You can bow your heart and say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I have done wrong. I don't want to die and go to hell. I want you to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and be my Savior. I'm telling you, he'll save you just like that. The Bible says you have to quicken who are dead in trespasses and sins. He wants you to be saved today. He's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. I'm going to tell you something. The greatest day in my life. I've had a lot of great days. Man, I got married. Miss Deanna and I, we've been married 40 years. I saw yesterday where Brother, Brother Gary and Miss Jane Pearson were married 40 years. Man, what a blessing to be married for 40 years. And that's a testimony. And I know there's people who've been married a lot longer than that. But, hey, what a blessing. That was a great day when, when the church house doors opened up and Miss Deanna come walking down the aisle and we got married. Her grandpa, who's been in heaven now, Brother Jack Miles, old preacher man, he married us. And Man, what a blessing. I've had a lot of great days. I graduated from high school. Man, that was a miracle. I, hate, I hated school. I was an outstanding student. I was always outstanding in the hall because I got in trouble. But you know what? I graduated from high school. I did. I graduated from Bible college. I didn't even think I could hack it. I, didn't, I really, honestly, I went to the administrator of the school that I went to, and I, I said, man, I'm not very smart. I don't think I can, I don't think I can, can cut it, you know. And he said, well, J.D., we're not here to fail you. We're here to help you. And, man, I applied myself, and I did good in Bible college because it was something that God had put on my heart, and I wanted to prepare myself to be something for him. And, and God helped me. Those are all great days in my life, but I'm telling you the greatest day in my life, the greatest day by far in my life, you know, is the day that I stepped out and walked down the aisle and gave my heart to Jesus Christ. The day of my salvation. You know why? Because that, that sealed my eternal destination. Man, God sent not his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Man, I appropriated my salvation that day. I'm so thankful, man. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that I'm saved. If you're a child of God, man, you ought to be thanking God. You ought to be praising God. You ought to be worshiping God. Let him know how much you love him. Worship is adoration and praise directed to God. And man, if anybody ought to be happy, it ought to be the person that's walking and leaping and praising God. The person that's not laid, uh, you know, at the gate begging for alms no more. Amen. Because Jesus quickened him. Amen. Spiritually speaking, he quickened you. If you're saved this morning, man, you got so much to be thankful for. We really do. I'm just, piano's playing softly. You can make an altar there in your home. Man, what a blessing, man. Just, what, just, just do business with God. I've often said the time to do business with God is when God's doing business with you. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. Man, he's been good to me. 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. He's been good to me. He sure has been. Been good to my family. He's a good God. He sure is. He's merciful. He's loving. He's kind. Man, he's been good, hasn't he? Yes, he has. He's been good. He's been wonderful. You know, I'm glad I'm in a position to help others that are less fortunate than I am. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, that's a blessing, isn't it? To be on, uh, the one that's, that's helping others and instead of the one maybe being helped. Sometimes we all have, have those situations where we need help. But, man, to be one that's able to help others. I think about all these people in these third world countries around the world. Man, I'm so proud of our missionaries. They help them with physical needs and then they, they reach their souls for Jesus Christ. Wow, great will be their reward in heaven, but great will be our reward in heaven for having a part in all that through our missions giving. I mentioned the other day my daughter Jenna, we were talking, I was traveling back home from somewhere, and she was talking to me, and she said, you know, Daddy, my favorite missionary is Beam's Bible. That's my favorite missionary. And she was telling me why, because Beam just takes the Bible, the Word of God, and goes to all these countries. We, we don't even have missionaries. I mean, they got like a, a hundreds of pastors and National pastors and missionaries receive Beam's Bibles, amen, and the Word of God going out like that. Man, what a great investment. What a great investment. And all our missionaries have access to Beam's Bibles free of charge. It's unbelievable ministry. Please pray for Beam's Bibles. They can get to where they can ship the Bibles out again, amen. All this stuff going on, all these countries being closed, it's affected the shipping of Bibles going out around the world. And our missionaries need that. Wow, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Thank you for listening today. Wow, what a blessing. Thank you for listening so much. We love you, and we thank God for you. And uh, tune in tonight. Tonight we're going to be preaching on Samson, an incredible message on Samson tonight. And I'm excited about it, and, and I know it'll be a blessing to you. If you know somebody that's maybe kind of maybe been away from the Lord, been backslidden a little bit, the message tonight is really going to be helpful to kind of give people hope that maybe, you know, you... Maybe you made some bad choices in your life and you just kind of, man, you feel like, man, God could never use me again. Oh, yes, he can. You, you tune in tonight and uh, hear the message about Samson. It'll give you hope to know that, hey, our God, he's, a, man, he, he's very merciful. He really is. And uh, I'm so thankful this morning a, a lady that I know that was away from the Lord got back with the Lord. We've been, Miss Deanna and I have been praying. I'm so glad this lady got back close to the Lord. It's a blessing. Amen. If you're away from the Lord this morning, listen, if you're backslidden, man, you need to get back close to the Lord. You need to get back in. If you're out, you need to get back in. I'm telling you. I'm telling you to get back in sooner than later. The way of the transgressor is hard, and your decisions are affecting your children and, and others around you. And I just encourage you, man, if you're backslidden, tune in tonight and hear the message about Samson. And it'll give you hope to know that God can use you again in your life. Let's bow our heads and we'll pray and be dismissed. And tonight will be... A, one service again at 6 o'clock. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we'll be uh, back in the book of Proverbs. We finally made it through Proverbs 5, 6, and 7 about the uh, adulterous woman and the strange woman and the whorish woman. So we're kind of excited to be moving on to chapter 8. Amen. And uh, be on, it's all the Bible. It's got to be preached. Amen. Line upon line, precept upon precept. We believe in preaching the whole counsel of God. We don't say, oh, we're going to skip these chapters because it's, it's hard preaching. No, we just preach hard and let the chips fall where they will, amen, because God knows what we need. But I hope you'll tune in tonight and also Wednesday night at 7. Remember, again, uh, the uh, tithes and offerings of the church and be faithful in that area, and that will sure be a blessing and encouragement to, to our hearts as well. Let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Father, we love you today. And God, again, I lift up those that are sick this morning. Please, dear Lord, please, please, please. Come alongside, Lord Jesus. We love you with all our hearts, but please come alongside those that are sick this morning. Lord, I pray that even from, uh, from, from this prayer forward, Lord, and the prayers that have been prayed this morning, that people could uh, just tell a difference, Lord, because prayers were being answered and we're all in agreement, Lord, that, that we want to see our people get well and so we can get back to the house of God together, dear Lord. And God, we love you and we need you and we know you're the great physician, Lord, and you do all things well. And God, we lift up our friends in these other states, Lord, that, that can't even have church, Lord, without being fined and all of that. And and God, we, we pray for them. Uh, Lord, I lift them up to you this morning. God, the churches in California and New Jersey, Lord, please bless them, Lord, today and give them great grace. And, and Lord, help them to stand to, true to you, Lord, during these difficult times. And God, thank you for men that have backbone and, and just stand for the truth and for Jesus Christ, just like Peter and John did, Lord, even if it means uh, being locked up in jail by the Sanhedrin, Lord. God, men of God are willing and ready to, to do that if necessary, Lord. But God, please protect their families and their children and grandchildren 
grandchildren and so forth, Lord, their churches, Lord, please. And God, just bring us back together tonight, Lord, at 6 o'clock to hear the message on Samson. We sure do love you. And Lord, bless this message this morning on persecution. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.